So let's get speaker view and I'm gonna share my screen because some of you know, I have a corporate background and um, using PowerPoint really helps me um, to organize all of my thoughts. So where, share screen, here we go. And let me get here and get to the beginning. All right, I'm gonna move us over here and switch to speaker view, talking, that's weird. Hang on, it's always the fun of Zoom. It's like, how do I make this work? So anyway, there it is. You're, you'll all be there on my side panel. And then, all right, so, and let's get to the top. All right, so I started this whole idea with, um, I mean, it's been so freaking hot, right? We've had all these wildfires in the West anyway. I don't know how it's been in um, New York for you, Jen. I'm but. laughing because I left Miami and I'm like, it was 48 degrees on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, you went from being um, super hot now to actually having real seasons, which is Yeah, again. I'm excited about. Yeah. So we've had, um, we are lucky. We actually had some rain recently. We've had opportunities to wear boots, right? And sweaters a little bit, and then we get hot again. So there's a lot of pent up heat. Um, and that in itself can lead to a lot of um, kind of irritation and frustration, kind of emotional issues um, as well as inflammation. But um, beyond that, when I really started thinking about this, like burnt up or burnt out, right? There's like heat on the outside and there's heat on the inside. And there's all of the stress that this last year and a half has been about. And so, you know, that's been compounding everything. And so that's kind of what we're going to dig into a little bit tonight. And then like, how do we conquer that? Like, what does that look like? So why do we need to fight inflammation, right? Why, if we, if we don't address it, it becomes chronic disease. So we really do need to be proactive about our health. And this is a very um, concrete way to attack things, because to attack things, to address things, I should say. Um, because there's more and more research out there on inflammation, um, what diseases it's tied to, but also to what are biomarkers in our body. And they've done a lot of research on like, okay, well, what are some things, what are ways we can do to counteract that inflammation and see changes in those bio biomarkers. So we're going to get into that. Um, and then talk about, you know, ways that we calm it, or I've been it sort of came up with this uh, tame the flames of inflammation. So we're gonna talk about like, what are some things we can do for that? Um, and then we'll get a little bit into the detox and how that's gonna work. Um, and I do wanna mention that, you know, I've been teaching yoga since 2005. Um, so that's yoga and mindfulness are always framed in what I do, um, but also that um, yoga sister science, or I should say sibling science, I guess these days. Uh, Ayurveda, that's this word here, is um, is what used to be the science of longevity before we had Western medicine, right? It's thousands of years old. And it's this idea that if we um, really take care of our bodies and we optimize our digestion and we align our eating and lifestyle with the seasons, that we can optimize our well being and avoid getting sick. So it's very much about wellness as opposed to like Western medicine is amazing once you're sick, but Ayurveda is really, really great um, tool and ancient wisdom that's been proven as well. A lot of it has been proven in modern science that helps to optimize well being. And um, this was my first teacher in, um, is that mirrored? I don't know. This is my first teacher in, that I met in through my nutrition school in 2008. This is John Dooliard. He wrote this book many years ago, The Three Season Diet. I don't really like the word diet, but he really kind of gets to the heart of the matter of like, what is seasonal eating and what is happening with our bodies, with the seasons and the change of the seasons. Um, and so, by the way, at the change of the seasons is a really great time to do a cleanse or a detox. So I usually do these three times a year. And in California, you know, our summertime tends to end in October, more so than when the calendar flips, you know, at the uh, fall equinox. Um, and then we'll do it again sort of in wintertime in January, the New Year's perfect. And then usually in May, when we're sort of in that, that really damp part of spring, that May gray time. Um, but each season has its own sort of energy and its own challenges. In the summer, that challenge is heat. Right? And we can see it in the color of these leaves, all that fire energy, right? That's the heat of the summer now that it's, it's um, 
stored up in those leaves and then they turn these beautiful colors and then they fall and go into the winter season. So we're in this transitional, um, this transition between summer and fall. And so it's a really great time to be addressing the things like pent up heat and inflammation that we are in this cleanse. Um, another thing I want to mention, you know, um, is this quote here down here by Dr. Rupa uh, Maria. I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right. Um, she is a doctor out of uh, University of California, San Francisco, I believe. And she co-authored this book, Inflamed. Uh, chronic inflammation is now thought to be the most significant cause of death in the world today, with more than 50% of all deaths, 50% of all deaths globally attributed to inflammation-related diseases. And this is tied to metrics from the Centers for Disease Control, right? This is not just her, you know, throwing numbers out there. Um, the data is there. And it's real. So when you look at, you know, diabetes, heart disease, for example, inflammation is what's happening first before those diseases manifest. Um, so super important to address. Uh, so in, in like a little bit of context, if we look at the big picture, that what's happening with the earth, right? I mean, the climate is changing. We're having crazy storms in the Gulf because of the heat in the Gulf, right? We had all those crazy floods in the Louisiana area. Um, we have all these wildfires going on. We had crazy flooding in the Northeast, um, not to mention what's happening in the rest of the world, right? So, you know, things are shifting. There is more heat in the atmosphere and in the ocean. So, you know, and we know that saying, right? Like as above, so below, we also can think of like as without, so within, right? So what's happening on the outside impacts what's happening on the inside. So, and when we talk about um, inflammation, you know, there's so many triggers. One of the things that uh, Dr. Rupa talks about in this book is how toxins have a huge impact on inflammation. So if you think about the toxins in the air we breathe, right? From all the wildfires or just from, you know, traffic on the freeways. Um, if you look at the toxins in water that we're drinking, even you know if you're drinking bottled water in plastic, for example, which I'm not, but if this were a plastic bottle, you're at risk for absorbing um, BPA and other endocrine disruptors from that plastic. And then um, if you're, um, my phone just dinged, I just lost my train of thought. Um, so then there's water, of course, like polluted water that may be coming into your house. Um, you know, we've seen the studies about carbonated water, how there are a lot of um, perfluoroalkyl compounds. Those are PFKs or um, is it PFKs, um, but they're, uh, they're forever chemicals that accumulate in our body and are um, cancer causing. So we look at the air, we look at the water, then you look at the soil, right? A lot of our, our soil is actually holding less carbon, is, and so it's also holding less water when it rains, so that's why the floods are, are getting more torrential. Um, and so that means our soil is depleted, and so our foods are depleted. So we have to be a little more aware about where we're sourcing our food from so that we're getting you know, the micronutrients we need, we're getting sufficient um, nutrition. Um, and then of course we have the cumulative stress of the last, what is it, 18 months now or it's October, all this stuff started what in February, 2020 with the pandemic. And when you think about that, I mean, so many people lost loved ones. Uh, so there's, there's the trauma of grief. Um, so many people had grief from the loss of experiences, you know, like kids not getting to have their high school prom and graduation. Um, you know, I had a great sense of loss of our yoga community and like my whole, everything that I was doing, like the rug was pulled up, you know, my schedule was finally perfect and I loved everything I was doing and my corporate wellness business is booming and it was like, everything's finally going great. And then there came the COVID rug, pulling it all, pulling it out up from underneath of me. Um, and so when you just look at all of the shifts, of what we've been going through for the 18 months, it's kind of like we've been holding our breath right? You know, you feel stressed when you hold your breath and we're holding that tension. And as a result of that too, I think a lot of us have created um, coping mechanisms that maybe um, are we're still kind of stuck with, like they probably served us at the time, like, okay, I just need to get through this. So I'm going to have some chocolate chip cookies and binge watch Netflix 
right? Or I'm going to uh, drink some <laughs> wine and stay up late till two in the morning and sleep in in the morning. And, um, you know, a lot of our sleep patterns got thrown off. Um, our definitely our, our, our food um, patterns changed. I mean, I, I don't have the stats in front of me, but um, it was crazy the how much money like Pepsi and Frito Lay, how much more money they made in 2020 because how <laughs> many, how many people um, how much people increased their consumption of junk food. Um, also, too, um, so all that junk food and guess what that resulted in. The research shows of those surveyed and responded, the average weight gain during the pandemic was 29 pounds. <gasps> Yeah. Wow. And I know I have I have friends wow. that have that experience, right? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Seriously. Wow, that's horrifying. That's horrifying. So sad. Hang on one sec. I'm gonna see if I'm worried that someone is pinging me that is trying to get in. Okay, no, I think we're fine. Uh, we're fine. Okay. So there's I mean, I just want you to realize like if you're feeling miserable, there's a lot of reasons, right? It's like no fault of your own. Um, and on top of all of this, we have our culture, which is saying to you, you know, just pull yourself up by the bootstraps, just, you know, fight on, keep producing, make more money, buy more stuff. Like, you know, don't take the time to reflect or to process or to relax even, right? Um, and so a lot of us have just been kind of like toughing it out and not really taking the time to kind of um, process and digest what happened, to kind of let go of some of that emotion and then make some conscious choices about how you can really start to take better care of yourself, right? And I, and I know it takes energy to take care of yourself. Um, and so you can really get stuck. And I've had that, you know, I've been, I've overworked myself running my own business in the years past. And I know what it's like to get kind of, you're so stuck that you're like, you're too tired to make food. You're too tired to actually figure out how to nourish yourself. So you just get stuck in this cycle of depletion. So, um, you know, I get it. Uh, it's not easy, um, but there are some things that you can start to do to address it. So, you know, there's kind of like big picture of where we're at. Um, and then, so, you know, what, so if you look at um, inflammation specifically, what causes inflammation? So, processed foods. yeah, right. So, okay, we'll start there. Thanks, Jen. Processed foods. So I look at mm -hmm. all of this. So, and especially nowadays we have ultra processed foods. And so in my um, residency for grad school last week, we had some um, kind of the cutting edge researchers really talking about the latest data on this and, um, we do see that ultra processed foods have a huge impact on our blood sugar levels. They have a huge impact on our uh, lipid levels, right? Our cholesterol levels, triglycerides, things like that. Um, and then that in turn create correlates with greater risk for heart disease, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. When I talk about metabolic syndrome, they used to call it like pre-diabetes, but it's when you have, um, I think three of five factors, let's see if I can remember. So if you have insulin resistance, that means that your body can't take up the blood, the, the, the energy that you're taking in, right? So the glucose is just circulating in your blood causing issues. So you have insulin resistance. Um, you have greater weight around the uh, midsection. Abdomen. Yeah, um, adipose um, um, fat around the abdomen is actually active, right? It's not just like energy there, for you to use, it actually has a hormonal impact. So you have those two markers. Um, I think then if you, it's uh, blood lipid levels um, and then inflammation markers. So, you know, a cup, just having a couple of those symptoms means you're on the path for, um, for diabetes and or cardiovascular disease. So processed food is a huge part of that. Um, and it's, you know, it's hard because a lot of us are eating on the go. We're eating for convenience. And let's, I mean, let's face it, that food is designed to taste amazing. Um, so, you know, you, you can't eat just one, right? Remember that campaign for Lay's? And that's the way it's designed because food chemistry has gotten like amazing. I would not an amazing in a good way, but I mean, they've, they've gotten like really creative of how they use chemicals and food. So it's an issue. And those foods are designed to be addictive and it's kind of hard to kick the habit. When we look at it, yeah. 
What are the three things again? You said insulin resistance. And how do you know you have re insulin resistance? Uh, your doctor could measure your blood sugar levels. That would be one way to see what your A1C is, for example. Um, your fasting blood glucose level. Yeah. Uh, your waist size. Um, your um, blood lipids. So that's your cholesterol triglycerides. Uh, and let me refer to my notes. I think also inflammation markers, and there's various ones. Uh, one example is um, C-reactive protein. Um, we actually find that marker is much more indicative of cardiovascular, cardiovascular disease than your cholesterol levels. Um, where is this one? Okay. And your waist size, I said that. So those are three or four things. Um, and one of the things I think that's super important that's come out in the research is I think a lot of people think like, oh, well, my, my, you know, my parents have diabetes, so it's just genetic or that, you know, my, you know, my grandpa parents had heart disease, so it's genetic. There are more and more and more studies showing that lifestyle is way more important than genetic tendency. tendency. So all the things that we're talking about today um, have, can have a huge impact on your health, way more than if you don't have a genetic destiny, right? It's like what you do with your genes matters. So, okay. Um, so, lack of sleep. Do you have, is anybody else have a question? I'm gonna go I, through each Yeah, Kathy. Hey, just got a quick question for processed foods. Yeah. Um, what do you think about, and I don't want to go off around this, but what do you think about um, plant-based foods? Good love plant-based um, plant foods. Um, if you're speaking about like plant-based meats, for example, yeah. Yeah. there are some issues with those. Like I would much prefer that you actually have a mushroom burger than have, you know, a mushroom, <laughs> right? Have a mushroom on your burger as opposed to Beyond Meat, uh, one of them uses genetically engineered yeast to create that blood-like feel in the meat. Um, so it's really highly um, intensely manufactured. So I think that would fit in ultra processed. Um, and then that the other one of the meats is using um, uh, genetically modified um, source ingredients. So, um, I'm not a fan of the mock meats per se. I'd rather you, you know, put a mushroom on a burger or use uh, lentils and legumes, you know, make a black bean patty or, or something like that. You're starting with real food as opposed to um, this scientifically engineered food. Good question. Yeah, yeah good question. Uh, so if you look at lack of sleep, um, I know this was true of me at the beginning of the pandemic. I was like, oh, I can just stay. I mean, I don't have to go to work, so I can just stay up and binge Netflix. Um, and oh, I can't remember what show I watched. Like I watched the stupid one with the guy with the alligators, right? <laughs> it was such a terrible <laughs> show, right? It was awful, but it was like, you know, it was like a car crash and you can't take your eyes away. It was, it was, oh, it was awful. But, um, you know, so, and I know many people who, you know, got to work from home, then we're just kind of like got stuck in the cycle of just staying up later and, you know, binge watching is, is it can be, can be a good way to distract yourself of what's happening in the world, right? It's like, um, let me just check out and I get it. But if it gets to be the point where like you're, you're sleeping into the most constructive time, you know, constructive time of your sleep when your body is detoxing and healing, most of that is really happening between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. ish. Of course, you know, things change um, with our, the length of the days and whatever, but um, you want to make sure you're getting some sleep during that time. And if you're not, you're really looking at um, more inflammation as a result because your body isn't getting enough of quality deep sleep to restore and to heal and uh, to rebuild, right? For your liver to detox and for your kidneys to purify your blood and like for all the, your body systems, um, you really need some quality sleep. And, um, you know, I know like one, this is one of my challenges recently because I've been on Zooms at 6 a.m. East Coast um, timeline for my school. And, you know, I, I like to go to bed at 1130, 
But last night I was like, I watched the news at nine and I went to bed. I'm like, oh my God, I'm like an old lady. But um, it's super important to get your sleep. Um, so if you can, like that's one take home message that would be super helpful. If you can make sure you're getting some sleep, uh, getting to bed well before 2 a.m. So if you usually go to bed at midnight, try to dial it back to 1130. Get some more time um, of sleep within that window because it aligns well with your circadian rhythms when your body is trying to heal um, and rest and reset. Um, if we look at poor gut health, this is often tied to what we're eating, right? Because um, we actually need, and I have some research on this, we need good quality fiber, uh, there's a lot of cutting edge research, research on fiber and all the different types. Um, we need good quality fiber to feed uh, the microbiome or the microbiota, right? So the good bacteria that are helping to, um, they help to break down certain carbohydrates, but they also help to create certain vitamins. So you really need to have good critters in your gut. And in order to give them a happy home, you need prebiotics, right? So prebiotics, um, are different types of fiber that um, the probiotics or the biotics, the um, bacteria thrive on. I meant to bring one more prop. Hang on one sec. So, you know, we think a lot these days about like um, probiotics, right? So like kombucha, and if anybody lives near Costa Mesa, this is from Fermentation Farm. I just am going to, um, they're not giving me any money, but um, this is, this one tastes like sunshine to me. It's called TGT. It's tangerine, ginger, turmeric. Turmeric, you're going to learn a lot about because it's a huge inflammation fighter. But um, mm -hmm. if you happen to live near Fermentation Farm, they make um, their own kombucha. And this is a really great one for gut health. Question? Okay. So you need the you need good fiber, right, to feed your good the good bugs, um, and then you also need the good bugs. So your fermented foods, you know, kefir and kombucha and uh, kimchi and uh, yogurt, you know, those kinds of things are giving you those good bugs. But the other thing we need to to focus on, and this is a part um, I really really we address very well in um, these detoxes, is um, food sensitivities. So if you're eating foods that you're sensitive to, that creates inflammation in your gut. And your gut's like, I don't know what to do like with this gluten, for example. Like, for example, you don't have to have celiac disease to be gluten sensitive. It's not as chronic or acute, um, but it can be very unsettling. So there are a lot of triggers of food sensitivities. Many of them are wheat, corn, soy, gluten, um, dairy, and for some people, um, nightshades. So those are peppers, tomatoes. Um, eggplant. Eggplant, yeah. So um, those would be some things, like if you're having um, some issues with inflammation, those are foods you definitely want to be like, maybe I want to skip those. And we do aim to skip those as a part of our detox. And then you can test them later with a clean slate and get to figure out which one is your trigger, right? Which one makes you feel yucky and which foods actually um, make you feel, you know, like you're thriving. So there's a lot going on in gut health. And if your body can't process stuff that's in your gut, it has to go somewhere. And so it ends up going toward your, through your cells and to your joints. So inflammation related to food sensitivity can show up like arthritis and joint pain. It can show up like skin irritation and rashes. Um, it can even show up like brain fog, right? So there's a lot of impact um, from food sensitivities. And then stressful living. We talked about that, right? We talked about what is going on with the earth. We talked about what is going on with our lives. We're talking about like home, like those of you who are parents and homeschooling your kids while you're trying to work a job. I mean, you know, or those of you who are maybe don't have kids, but all of a sudden your husband's working from home all the time and you're together all the time. <laughs> or you're, you know, you've got roommates or, you know, just there's just a lot of stress going on with how we're living now. And it's like, there's the before COVID times and the after times, but we're really not quite in the after, right? Things are still mm -hmm. wonky. And some places people have hybrid workplaces and 
Um, you know, some people are still working from home and, you know, some people are being forced to go back to work and then they have to get tested or wear masks. You know, there's, there's still a lot of stress that's happening right now. So these are all the things, this is all within your control, right? These are all diet and lifestyle things that, that are tied to choices that you make. And honestly, sometimes there, we have subconscious choices, right? Like some of these foods are addictive. I struggled with disordered eating for years. So binge eating and bulimia and anorexia, all that stuff, like that's an emotional thing. And so it's not like, oh, I'm just going to choose to eat healthy. I get it. There's a lot underlying all of this. But, you know, taking it like one, one piece at a time, making some small changes at a time, you can really make a difference in terms of your food um, and lifestyle choices. So what, what happens, right, if inflammation goes unchecked? So if we just let the inflammation, um, I want to say fester, but I'm looking for a fire analogy. So if we want to let the inflammation, right, keep burning, if we want to continue overheating ourselves and that heat, right, can also come from like doing, from a sense of perfectionism, from having to be productive all the time, from um, feeling like we always have to be powering through and achieving, right? That's very much our culture. All of those things are like mental triggers for inflammation. So yeah. left unchecked, right? Where does, where does it lead? So cancer, right? We know more and more that inflammation is a precursor to most of our cancers. Um, diabetes, I talked about that earlier, right? That um, when we're looking at metabolic um, syndrome and um, some of those factors or precursors to um, diabetes, um, then two, inflammation leads to being overweight and obese because when you are inflamed and your inflammation, you can think of like your cells are stressed out, right? So when your cells are stressed out, they can't repair, they can't rebuild. When your nervous system is um, stressed out and overwhelmed, um, your body can't burn fat. So you're like constantly hungry, you're constantly craving sugar and the weight comes on. Um, I mentioned earlier too, that inflammation can lead to arthritis. Um, so I've had people in our detoxes in the past who have found amazing relief from arthritis pain, as well as weight loss from doing these programs. Um, high blood pressure, for sure. Um, because what happens with inflammation, right? A lot of times that inflammation is like heat, it's like oxidation, right? It's like rust. So it's actually hurting the lining of your cardiovascular system. And then what does your body do? to patch that damage, it puts cholesterol along the walls of your arteries to protect them. And over time that cholesterol accumulates, right? And that impacts your blood pressure because there's not as big a hole for the blood to go through or uh, not hole, a tunnel, right? Um, and then Alzheimer's disease. We now are realizing more and more that Alzheimer's disease is almost like diabetes of the brain in terms of the uh, inflammation markers that we're seeing there. So um, there's no need to think that Alzheimer's is a genetic uh, predisposition, right? If your parents have Alzheimer's or dementia and you're living your life differently, then hopefully you can avoid that outcome. Um, and I know people who are caring for their parents with Alzheimer's and that is such, such a hard, challenging thing to take on. And that in itself causes its own stress right? And um, trauma um, and heart disease, right? So inflammation leads to all of these aspects if we don't address it. And that's on the physical level. So then what about at the mental or the, uh, I'd say, yeah, the mental level, right? Um, if you notice that you're less patient, you have a shorter temper, that you are a quick to anger, that you're frustrated easily, um, or if you're finding that you're depressed and lethargic, um, like you can only barely like do the things you have to do with your day and then that's it, right? You're exhausted, you don't have anything left. Um, you may find too anxiety, um, exhaustion, burnout, lack of, uh, lack of motivation, like all of these things comprehensively um, are you know, tied to burnout, right? Taking a sip here of my cold golden, golden milk. 
um, thing. Not Starbucks. We used to drink a giant venti iced coffee. Now this is this is mock milk with uh, turmeric and stevia and uh, uh, pumpkin pie spice. All right. So um, I'll show you how to make that in a minute. So. So some things to think about um, with inflammation, I mentioned like the impact on your nervous system when you're stressed, right? Because stress is a big trigger of inflammation. So what happens when you're stressed is you're in, you end up like in fight flight mode, right? Our body was designed to be able to run from a tiger or a lion or to freeze um, in order to um, protect ourselves. But um, the reality is um, the stressors that we have uh, in reality, um, are not that life-threatening, but are at the biochemistry level, we still have these surges of adrenaline and cortisol, right? When we are stressed, like when the boss calls or you're multitasking with, um, you know, clients and kids or um, taking care of parents and trying to do your job, um, you know, all of the juggling everything, right? Or setting the alarm in, in the morning when you've only had five hours of sleep and the alarm goes off and all the right away, you're like in fight or flight. You're like, oh shit, I'm late. I overslept. Sorry, I didn't mean to cuss. Um, and uh, so you get already in this heightened state of stress. And then you end up like this kind of tension throughout the day. And you forget to take deep breaths and you're breathing up here. Right? And what happens when you're in this state, your body can't burn fat. And all it can do is get energy from the glycogen stored in your liver and in your muscles. And then it demands more glucose, more sugar. And so it puts you into like a lot of cravings. And so what's interesting too, is just even drinking too much caffeine can create this. Right, so we drink coffee like to wake us up to kind of get us going, and I enjoy coffee with my, for sure. Um, I try to keep it at one cup of half calf, but um, like too much coffee can put us in this fight or flight response. And what happens is then, so we can't burn fat, we crave more sugar, our immune system gets um, gets depressed, and our digestion also is a challenge because um, when you're in this fight or flight mode, there's no energy to process your food, right? All of your energy is in your extremities so you can run from the bear. So it also leads to being wired and tired. So if you've had this experience where at night you're like, you need to go to bed, but your mind is racing um, and you're exhausted, but you're, you're mentally, amped. like you feel your body is tired, but your mind is totally amped, right? So uh, we need to be rethinking like what kind of routines can we put in to help calm that, right? So what we want is to be in rest and digest. I like to think of these. So the first one, fight or flight, is your um, sympathetic nervous system or the stress response. And rest and, and digest is the parasympathetic nervous system, which I think of as the peace response, right? So this is when you have a greater sense of ease. And this is a place where your body can digest its food. It's where you can rebuild your muscles. Um, it's where you have like a greater sense of mental ease in the world. When something happens, like you can roll with the punches, you know, you have more patience, your immune system works better, your digestion works better, right? And this is a state that we want to be in. And um, there's a couple things we can do to get there, right? One of the best things you can do to get there is to breathe. Deep breath through your nose. Oh, there goes the first cycle. All right, let's do three together. I've actually been leading these with my um, economics policy classes this morning, and we're leading them in three deep breaths at the beginning of each session as bringing in wellness best practices for our Zooms. I know it's You said hilarious? economics. I'm thinking, were you looking at the stock market? I was taking serious deep breaths this week. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, we're talking economics and food policy, so we don't really look at the stock market. But anyway, but can you believe it? I've got these um, policy wonks doing deep breaths. So see if you'll do it with me. Let's do it. So what I like is to put your hands on your rib cage or on your belly, whatever feels best. Because you want to try to breathe into the entirety of your lungs, right? Um, you can keep your eyes open. That's totally cool. If you want to make this a micro med meditation, 
You can close your eyes and internally focus into the middle of your forehead. We think of that as the third eye, but it's also the prefrontal cortex. This is the wisest and calmest part of your mind. This is a place responsible for, you know, making decisions and choosing smart responses, but it's also the calmest part of your mind. So option to do that if you want. We're just going to take three deep breaths. So eyes open or close, you choose. And breathe in through your nose. Fill all the way up. And through your nose, exhale. Again, breathe in by your nose. And out. Then check your gaze again. If your eyes are closed, inward and upward. One more here. Big breath in. And out. I feel a difference. Do any of you feel a difference? Yep. Yeah. Right? And Brooke, you're a yoga teacher too. And it's like, sometimes we're like, oh my God, why am I not breathing? Oh, I mean, it, it literally, the deep breaths like that. And just the, I think this last 18 months, the exhales, the <sighs> really getting it out feels like demons are released or something like it's, it's so much. Right. So it's, it's Halloween. It's the time of year. Let's release, release the demons. <laughs> yeah. you know? Get it out. <laughs> Get it out. Yeah. And that's like emotional energy oh. also the toxins in our body right mm -hmm. for sure anybody and one other person want to comment on the, the three deep breaths good bad or indifferent awesome hey practice all right thank you for joining me with that um that means today aside from i did do yoga um but that means today i've done i think five sessions of three deep breaths so Wow. Micro, micro meditation, right? It can be that simple. I like that. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. So I want to, I don't want to geek. I don't want to go to, to, too totally crazy with you. I reckon it's 744. I'm, my goal is to finish the, this deck by, you know, like in the next 15 minutes. But um, I do think it's important for you to understand um, that there is real data on this. And I'm, my, you know, I've done many detoxes over the years. Um, and this one, I'm like really focusing on the theme of inflammation because where we're at. A lot of the foundation of it is the same, of course, but I do really feel like, um, and, and like <laughs> Dr. Rupa and Raj Patel totally agree with me. This book just came out in 2021, um, that we are collectively inflamed and it's huge, it's chronic. And it's in all populations, especially um, the underserved, um, and it's happening in the earth and it's happening inside and it's happening outside. So what is the science showing in terms of information on, re on research? So we just did those three deep breaths, right? That micro meditation. So, um, this study, um, this actually is more of a, a meta study that looked at, a, a, it reviewed a bunch of different research on meditation and overall came to the conclusion that meditation is linked to the down regulation of central inflammatory pathways. So what that means is um, they took, they measured, you know, they took people's blood and they measured various markers um, and found that the infl inflammatory markers decreased um, in those who practice meditation. Um, and this, these studies then added to, I mean, there's been a lot of knowledge growing about stress and inflammation. And so when we take those deep breaths or meditate for longer, I am going to ask you as a, a part of our detox to, at a minimum, do three deep breaths every day. Um, but I'll also give you the option. Um, we can all join together. Um, deep October has a 21 day meditation thing that's free that we could do in parallel with this total option. Um, but because there's been so much study on meditation and mindfulness and how it counters the stress response. And then in turn, that, um, triggers impacts at the cellular level. And so when we look at one of the markers of stress and aging in our cells, um, is our chromosomes, right? Our chromosomes are what carry our genes and, um, 
And so when they get replicated, there are these ends of them called telomeres. And what they found with meditators or people who practice, practice this kind of mindfulness, that those telomeres maintain their length and longevity better than people who don't practice meditation or mindfulness. So the science is showing that at the cellular level, we can make a difference by choosing to take time each day to breathe deeply and to create a greater sense of calm. There's real impact, right? It's not just woo-woo anymore. So it fights so meditation helps fight inflammation, but they also believe it's helping to fight aging because they're finding that these telomeres are the best markers of the aging process. So the double whammy there. Um, here we have, I love this one, right? The, an apple a day. In this study, to be fair, they studied three apples a day um, for six weeks. And they saw huge um, impacts in obesity associated inflammation and cardiovascular disease risk. Um, wow. Caveat, you need to eat the skin. And I would add the caveat that it should be an organic apple because um, apples are on the dirty dozen and they tend to carry pesticide residues, which Besides. we don't want because that can hurt um, your gut microbiome. Those pesticides can kill the good bugs. Also too, those pesticides your liver has to process. So and that's different. another thing I'm gonna ask you to do. Eat one apple a day throughout the detox. Question? No, okay. Uh, all right, and another one. This study was on the gut microbiome and there has been a lot more research, I'd say in like the last three or five years coming out about this. Um, and we in my, my school have been looking at um, like different types of fiber versus different outcomes. Um, so there's a lot of studies on psyllium, which is the key ingredient in Metamucil. That's, you know, that's a great fiber. Um, this particular study that was focused on inflammation focused on the fiber inulin, which who knows what that is, right? Um, the fiber inulin we see in asparagus, bananas, burdock root, which I, nobody really eats that, but um, it's out there. Um, chicory, <laughs> these three um, you'll find in the tricolore salad, you know, at an Italian restaurant, right? This radicchio is like a purple color. That Belgian endive is kind of shaped like this and it's um, like a pale green. So those are really great sources for inulin. Dandelion roots, huge fan of um, dandelion root tea as a liver cleanser. Garlic, we all know that one. Leeks, that one too. The Jerusalem artichokes. Yeah. Um, they're so good. Harder to find. How do you prepare them, Jen? Well, <laughs> I'm sticking carrots in my mouth. <laughs> I'm watching you. Um, on several of those with the Jerusalem artichokes, they take the heart. And it's a Jewish custom that you prepare them with a chicken broth. Some people also, they do the wild side where they fry them and batter them, which oh, is amazing as well. Or they grind them up and you make them similar to a latke. You put them oh. in a latke, for example. So it's a root. But even the chicore and the mm -hmm. dandelion root, um, the burdock, that's a custom in, for Italians and Greeks when you make beans and greens. Mm -hmm. It's bitters, nice. it's bitters, but it's really awesome. It's so yummy. And you use garlic, olive oil, and um, the base, the root base for those is chicken stock. Okay. Nice. You have all of those. So if you know how to make yeah. that, um, I would like for you to send me a recipe. Um, and I will. I, you know what? That would be it's, great. I can, I'll have to write it down for you, but uh, my in-laws and family members, you go and you pick it. And I used to tease them. I'd be like, ma, make sure you wash it good because the dogs pee on that stuff, you know, because <laughs> they go out in the wild and they pick it up. <laughs> you know, it grows off the side of the road here. It's like wildfire. You can find it anywhere. Same thing in Greece. The foods oh. that is funny that they laugh about now and say was it was a poor man's food. Yeah. which is like an example would I buy it every day is um, the stuff that tastes like pepper, arugula. Oh, arugula, yeah. yes. 
Yeah. Arugula, so dandelion greens, burdock is all like Good gross, stuff. grows in the wild. And thank you so much because you reminded me of something really important. And I don't know if I put it in here specifically that the two tastes that we're really focusing on is that bitter taste. Bitter. So yeah. all of these um, dark. They green, clean, they clean your bowels. Yeah. They clean your lid. They help support your liver to right. clean things. And they also help clean your digestive tract. Right. So, and you know, some of these are helping to support the good, um, the good bugs in your microbiome that in turn help counter inflammation. So we do need to have, you know, probiotics are great with like the kombucha and stuff I mentioned earlier, but the prebiotics are super important. So these are really great sources, but also too, these bitter tastes here, these specifically, mm -hmm. um, and like arugula and things like that, um, help to counter um, this internal heat and inflammation. So that bitter taste helps to calm all that internal heat and also to do naturally sweet foods. So the things that we have now, like sweet potatoes are coming in season, but we still have melons. We still have some stone fruit around. All the squash. Um, the squashes and pumpkin that are coming in. So those things that are naturally sweet are also good to help calm heat and inflammation. So, and I think I'll get into that in a second, but. And then here's one more study I'm going to show you. Um, and this one is talking about um, how about the tie between waist, waist circumference and inflammatory markers. And so one of the things I think that like as public health officials and health coaches out here, we need to stop focusing on the scale, on how much you weigh, and much more on the size of your waist there are plenty of people who weigh the same they have since high school, right? But it looks way different, right? What's most important is the, the weight that you carry around your middle has a huge impact on inflammatory response because that, um, that's visceral fat that has an endocrine um, impact. So what they found, they studied, um, and this is a firefighter study, I believe. Is this the firefighter study? Oh no, this is Healthy Men and Women on the European Journal. Um, so this one, they looked at these markers, C-reactive protein, fibroningen, and, and adiponectin. Um, but, so they looked at three different markers and they found that people with a bigger waist and who were inactive had um, higher levels of inflammation, right? So there's a correlation there. And what you want ideally you don't have to do fancy measurements. A lot of times you'll see like hip to weight, waist ratio and all this stuff. Bottom line, you want to look at your waist versus your height. The goal is that your waist should be less than half your height for you to be in the safest no risk category. When you see down here, these are BMI markers. So BMI is what our doctors calculate and public health um, officials use to look at populations. Mm -hmm. But on the individual level, if you look at your waist to height ratio, if you're, um, if you're in, you know, 50% seems to be like sort of that magic number where if you're under, if your waist is less than half your height, you're in a pretty moderate, you're either totally in the safe zone or in a little bit lower risk. So um, that's just something that um, you'll look at. Um, right after the meeting. <laughs> yeah, I, and I don't want, I, I'm not, um, I'm not sharing this because I don't want anybody to, to freak out, but because one of the things I want y'all to do with this detox, if you decide to join, is in, in step on the scale, sure, fine, step on the scale, but one thing you could do is like get a piece of rope or a ribbon or a belt and put it around the narrowest part of your waist and just make a mark of where that is. And then notice throughout the cleanse how that changes. Because, you know, we first we lose the gas of the bloating. That goes away, yeah. right? And you feel better in the middle, right? So a lot of things change in the middle before the scale changes. And sometimes I think, I know, we're so I was so tied to the scale back in my disordered eating day. And it was like, oh my God, if it was over a certain number. I mean, I used to try to stay 100 pounds. Like, that's, oh my God, that's like... 15 pounds lighter than I am now. Like, that's crazy. 
but that's the number that I had fixated in my head. And if I wasn't that number, then it was like, I don't get to eat today, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I do that for a few days and then I would binge and purge. And I mean, it was just like, so ridiculous, but, and it wasn't like that every day of my life forever, but, um, you know, it was like 15 years of that off and on, depending on how stressed my life was and how unhappy I was with my job or my relationships or whatever. So, and the thing is that as a holistic health coach, like that's the thing, all these things are integrated, right? What's happening in your life impacts how you choose to eat. And what's, what, how you eat impacts how you feel in your life. It's totally integrated. So I'm not saying like, oh, it's so easy just to stop disordered eating, ha eating habits. It's not. Um, but there are certain steps that you can start taking. And so like, if you want to step away from the scale, do it. I have a scale now that is in British stones. Because I was living in London at the time and I was like, yeah, there's no number. Like, I don't have this benchmark I'm trying to strive for. It's just where I can see the delta. You know, I could just see the change. So anyway, um, I digress. Um, but waist size is more important than weight. And not so much of what that number is, but like, you know, if you're making changes in food and lifestyle, it's just to see the shift, right? To know that ah, things are getting better. I'm less inflamed. I'm less bloated. Um, you know, and the, the fat is starting to go away. That's great. So another, oh, that's, sorry, I have one more study. Okay. Time-restricted feeding. This is another element of our detox. Um, now you may have heard it called intermittent fasting and there's all different kinds. Um, there's a two, five, where it's like two days of the week, you like, you know, cut down to like five, 600 calories. And then the rest of the week, you eat whatever you want. That's one way to do it. Um, this research was on the 16-8, where you, it's not so much what you eat, it's when you eat. And as you, this one, you condense your eating window to just eight hours, and then the other 16 hours you don't eat. And in doing this, this is the fire fire study. Um, in doing this, they have found that there's a serious reduced stress response in your biological marker. So we can see um, reduced inflammation markers. And, um, and even when these firefighters like went out on a call and were in stressful situations, even then by practicing um, this time restricted eating, they had less of those biochemical markers of like the ad adrenaline and cortisol and stuff like that. Their bodies were more resilient to the stress um, and also the inflammation um, was decreased. So. This is something, um, so this time-restricted feeding or intermittent fasting, whatever you want to call it, is an element in uh, week two of our detox. And you can choose to take it on or not. Um, there is a caveat for this. If you're already underweight or if you're prone to anxiety, you want to be careful with this because um, if your blood sugar levels move a lot, that can sometimes trigger anxiety If um, uh, in some folks. We've seen that. Um, and if you're already underweight, um, you know, you have to be careful because you may, you, you may, you know, you, you may end up losing more weight and that's not what we want um, you to do if you're underweight. So just, there's some exceptions to be aware of, but, um, if you've been wanting to experiment with this, you know, I have more information on that. It'll be a part of our program. Um, so, you know, there, so now based on what we know, so taming inflammation, right? In order to do that, we need self-care. We need to take care of ourselves. We need to nourish ourselves with good food. We need to take time to, to manage our stress. Um, we need to take time to uh, relax, um, to maybe take some time in silence. We need to take some time maybe with some stillness. Um, and to really kind of get in tune with like how we're feeling and where we're at so we can kind of start the healing process because the, all of the things that we've been doing to cope, right, is a great distraction, but unless we actually take the time to pause and feel, we can't heal, right? You've got to kind of let yourself have the, um, sensations of whatever you've been going through and kind of get in touch with that so you can process it. So part of this is like, you know, that's rooted in mindfulness. Um, meditation is a time to take, you know, a few minutes for that. Um, so it's definitely, there's a big focus on food, um, of course, right? Detoxing is always about that. 
Um, we'll bring in the element of time restricted eating. Um, conscious movement, by that I mean like, I don't, I'm not gonna tell you to go to the gym or to go to yoga, but movement is important because it helps your immune system, your digestive system work better. So that you can dance, you can walk, you can swim, you know, whatever you wanna do, um, get some movement in. And then, and the mindfulness, if it's just your three minutes, gaze up here, not three minutes, three breaths or three minutes a day, right? Little micro meditation. You can start with that, or you can do the Deepak meditation. That's it's Deepak and Oprah. It's like 11. Those are usually like 10 or 11 minutes. So, so those are the things. And so the impacts that I've seen over the years of leading these, many people have kicked their sugar addictions. Um, and as a result, uh, weight loss usually happens. Many people definitely feel a relief from flushing out the toxins. They feel less joint pain, clearer skin, better energy, um, better sleep. Uh, as we take out the food sensitivity triggers, we get better digestion, better energy, better immune yeah. function. Um, as we also, as we get rid of some of those triggers, we reduce gas and bloating, brain fog and fatigue. So these are all results some people have seen in these detoxes. Um, and what I think, so rhythmic eating, so it's seasonal eating, which I haven't talked about that specifically. I mean, I mentioned it. Um, and rhythmic eating. So finding a rhythm to whether, whether you're feasting or fasting, that time-restricted eating fits in there. And savoring that being aligned with nature and you know nature's rhythms and the bounty around us. So like what Jen is eating in New York is going to be probably a little bit different than what we're eating here in SoCal, but not totally different, right? Um, but so seasonality is locality. Um, and if you've been around a while, you know my approach here. Um, if you're new to me, you're like, what are the three Ps? This is the foundation of how I put recipes and meal plans together. Start with produce, add protein, and add pizzazz. And then the pizzazz are good fats because ladies, we need good fats for our hormones to be happy. Um, we also need them to stabilize our blood sugar levels. Um, we also know too how important good fats are into um, creating better lipid profiles in our blood. Um, also in pizzazz are spices. So one of the things I'm gonna be emphasizing and you can even start this now is turmeric. Um, this is this yellow spice. It's normally you see it associated with Indian food. It doesn't really have a lot of flavor. It's not curry seasoning, although you'll think of it as curry because a lot of times it's in curry. Um, it has a slight bitterness to it, um, but it doesn't really have a lot of flavor. So I have it right now in my, um, it's called golden milk. Usually you do it as like a hot thing, you know, from an Ayurvedic um, techniques or in India, they heat up milk, any kind of milk you want. And well, we're going to take out dairy for the detox, but for now, any kind of milk you want. Um, and you add in a half teaspoon or I'm using a full teaspoon of turmeric. Then you can add cinnamon or ginger or nutmeg. I was like, why not just use pumpkin pie spice? Cause that's all of that. And I put some, a little bit of black pepper because that helps turmeric actually right more absorbable. Metabolize. And I, I, yeah. Uh, you can assimilate the turmeric better when you have a little bit of black pepper with it. And okay. then I put um, stevia on mine, but you could use honey or maple syrup. And usually you would do it hot, but you know, it was hot today. So I decided I, I did my cold. Um, another, so in that pizzazz are all of these spices. So one of the things, like I said, is like, go for the turmeric for sure. Add the pumpkin pie spice if you want, right? You can make your own iced pumpkin spice latte. That's way oh. better for you. Oh. Um, I'll show you that recipe in a second. Or you can do some other things that are really simple. Trader Joe's has a mighty turmeric shop. Do you have Trader Joe's where you are, Jen? Yeah, we do actually. But I brought all my spices from the Jewish store. Good. <laughs> so I have I'm like by the gallon. <laughs> good. So, so good. Um, some of us are like, we don't really cook that much. We're not going to whip out the Vitamix. I get it. Okay. i just wanted to say, Hey, here's a little cheat. If you want a little sprinkle, do you? Yeah, I know <laughs> this. And this has been my go-to lately. Perfect. And I talked about this in one of my newsletters. This oh, is a Trader that. Joe's. This is their ginger turmeric tea. So good. And honestly, to make your life easy, 
I put four tea bags in a quart jar of water and just put it in the fridge and cold brew it. You don't even okay. have to put water. Just put it in the fridge overnight and it's there for you. Here, I'll grab it for you. Oh, I think I have Okay, this one I started this afternoon. So there's my four tea bags. See how yellow it is, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then I actually put more turmeric in my glass and add, because I've been, uh, I've been under a lot of stress. So I'm like trying to counter that, right? Doing everything I can to support my system um, just because of right now in this intense period with school and everything. So I'm actually like in a glass, putting in some dry uh, powdered turmeric and then putting my turmeric tea in there. I'm like going double dosage. Um, you really can't overdo it with turmeric. Uh, if you were to overdo it, like say you're taking like four teaspoons a day, you might get a little bit constipated. So if that were to happen, then you know, that's only- Or turn um, yellow. <laughs> be oh, no. yellow. <laughs> I was going to ask her, I'm like, Jen, you know, you could, I was just thinking of this out loud in my head to add it to your lemon recipe with the cayenne and the honey. Oh yeah, I could add it to my Ener energizing lemonade. Yeah. Yeah. So that reminds me, I should- um, I'll, I'll Make it a little I'll, more yellow. I'll flip actually right now to the, um, I'm going to share with you, once we get this um, detox started, this is kind of like our little, this is our focus, right? What mm -hmm. we're doing, right? Um, we want to just do our best, like go perfection, <clears throat> try to do a little less and be more, right? One of the ways to de-stress is like just to get into nature and just try to find a little stillness, even if it's three minutes with your toes in the grass, right? Or one minute sitting in silence. Um, but these, those little things can have a big, big impact. Um, I, like I said, we have the option to bring in the Deepak Chopra meditation if you want to add that element. Or you can just do three, three deep breaths, it's fine. Um, connect to nature's rhythms. So the foods we're talking about, so we mentioned earlier, all these bitter foods. So leafy greens and kale, cilantro is a great one. Parsley, chard, spinach, arugula. Um, so, you know, then we want to alkalize because so inflammation is creating like a um, high acid environment with processed foods and stuff. So we want to alkalize with artichoke, celery, green beans, whether you eat them or juice them. Um, naturally sweet, antioxidant rich, high fiber foods that are in season now. So apples and beets and berries and dates, melons, pears, persimmons, pineapples, pomegranates, sweet potatoes, it's all the peas. There's a lot of peas in the fall. Um, sweet potatoes, pumpkins, and squash. So those would be the kind of things we wanna focus on. And I'm gonna give you a bunch of recipes to help and like smoothie ideas and stuff like that. Um, some shortcuts, you wanna add your protein. Um, the, I'm grass-fed, I mean, plant-based for me is that usually like there's one meal a day or five days a week, maybe five meals a week that I use um, sardines or salmon or eggs or chicken. I don't eat beef or pork, but you know, everybody's different. Everybody has different needs. So you can totally do this plant-based if you want with your nuts, your seeds and your legumes. That's um, especially because um, our nuts and seeds and well, the seeds and legumes are really good for like the fiber content and your gut health. Um, but if you're going to do, you know, meats or animal products, you want to do grass fed, um, organic free range versions of those things. Um, and then the pizzazz, right? So we want some good oils or avocado oils or flaxseed oils, coconut oil, sesame oil, seed, yeah, all those good things. And then all um, some of your spices, like I mentioned, the turmeric the, and cumin and coriander. Cumin, those coriander. Together, those three Danger. together are like magic Cumin for anything that you're coriander. making. Turmeric, cumin, and coriander. I really need to make my, my own little like red gems pizzazz blend <laughs> that you just shake on your tofu or your chicken breast or whatever. Um, but if you just use those three things, the turmeric and cumin together, when you use them together, they turn this really pretty red color. So when I make eggs, for example, put olive oil in the pan, turmeric, cumin, salt, pepper, eggs and you get red eggs and then you put that over greens and you have <laughs> you have red eggs and greens not green eggs and ham yeah mm. so those are some of the spices you want to focus on and if it's colder where you are or if you end up having more colder weather then you can add in things like chili pepper 
um, if you wanted more ginger, more garlic, more cayenne, those things. Um, and then of course you can still have um, grains, you just want non-gluten ones. So quinoa, rice, rice noodles, brown rice pasta. Um, and then there's various things for you to drink. Um, obviously we wanna avoid uh, alcohol, caffeine, sugar. Um, and the caffeine thing, I suggest, you know, tapering rather than going cold turkey because that can have its own issues. Um, even if you just go from full calf to decaf or, you know, or from two cups to one cup, do what you can there. Um, but that's, you know, the overall focus. But the idea is with, um, with our detox. And so there's all these, I'm just going to flip through this really fast. I'm not going to show you a bunch of stuff, but there's recipes for beverages. And I'm not done with this yet, but um, I have like um, quick tips for snacks and easy eating. Um, I have some flow. Um, oh, these are um, different wraps and power packs you can put together for lunch on the go. These are slow cooked meals that are super easy to put in the slow cooker. I have a bunch of like four different smoothie recipes that are seasonal and totally great for the cleanse. And then I'll put other things in here. This is a really nice some cilantro smoothie I just discovered. Most mm -hmm. of these things I've made myself, but if not, um, you know, I give, this is props to the, um, I grow Hala Mama sprouts. So props to them for the cilantro recipe. Um, but this is what I'm drinking right now. So mm -hmm. since I was talking about it, I wanted to bring it up. So my golden milk, like oftentimes it's done hot. <laughs> but I didn't want hot. So I did it cold. So I just did a teaspoon of turmeric. I did like a half teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, a pinch of black pepper, and I put in six drops of stevia. So it is really good. So it changed your um, cardamom and nutmeg. Yeah, look at all those good things. But with the pumpkin pie spice, it was like, oh, one and done. <laughs> all right. So that's just, um, I'll, I'm giving you those, rest, those resources as a part of this. And then you're like, how is this all gonna work? So um, you're going to have me in your pocket um, as an app, but we interact through this and it's only us, only our group in this, I call it a portal of positivity. So this is rooted, it's built on positive psychology. So, and the idea is that you, um, it starts with daily inspiration. So every day you're going to get a little notification to read the inspiration. And that's what I'm going to ask you to take three deep breaths. You read your daily inspiration, you take three deep breaths. Right? That's how you start your day. And then you can go in and you can do um, a journal. You can journal, um, there's a gratitude journal in here because when you're in that space of gratitude, you can't be, your, your body can only have one emotion at a time. So if you're practicing gratitude, that helps to calm stress. It helps to calm anxiety. So there's a place for you to journal gratitude. There is a place in here, it's called the wall of wins, where you get to celebrate your success because positive psychology teaches us that if we say out loud, like I did this, um, I had this success, then we're more likely to repeat that success. So the changes that we make, documenting the changes that we make and sharing the changes that we make means that the changes are more likely to stick. So that's in here. And then the way it is, is like, I just went through like, here's what the whole cleanse is about. But the way it's built is that there's three coaching sessions each week. So, you know, the first thing is like, minimize the caffeine and the sugar. And then it's like, okay, you know, eat organic. So it's um, small changes over time. Instead of, you can take on everything at once if you want, but it's designed so you're making small changes over time. So that by the end of 21 days, you have created sustainable change that sticks. Um, and then you also have some awakened your intuition about like what foods sort of are your triggers and which ones are causing the inflammation and the issues and have a better sense of which foods that, you know, make you feel good. So just so you know, that's how it works. But we're also, um, we're going to do a kickoff meeting next Monday night, similar to this kind of forum. Um, and then we'll meet the following two Tuesdays just to check in with each other and be like, okay, how are things going? And what questions do you have? And then I'll forecast kind of what's going on in the next phase and get you ready for that and field questions and share more kind of content and context for all of this. Um, so that's how it works. And the idea is that like, you know, everything is in this one space. So you don't have to like go to that website and check this thing and look for that email. And, you know, all of the coaching lessons, everything is in the app. 
accept the recipe supplements and resources. That's going to be one PDF file I'll send you. And if you choose to do the, the Deepak Chopra, Oprah meditation thing. Um, and this deal is on now if you want to, um, if you know you want to do it. Um, it's technically bring a friend for free, but the easiest way to administer that is just to give you half off. So that's the promo code. I think I should stop sharing my screen. Unless, is there any questions? Anybody wants me to revisit um, a slide or anything in the handout? Then I'll stop sharing my screen. Okay, we're good. Now I can see more of your faces. Yay. Um, and I was going to put in the chat questions, insights, ahas. Well, so. Um... Uh, as far as apple with the skin, you can just you can still make a smoothie with a whole apple, right? Yeah, so that, that would still be including the skin. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm a huge fan. Um, I put this on social media the other day of rather than juicing things, puree things. So you could put your apple in the Vitamix, you know, with. Um, you could use some fresh turmeric and some ginger and, and do that. And then maybe put in, I don't know, some, put in some spinach or arugula or something, or do apples and cabbage or, you know, you could mm. add some vegetables in there. Yeah. So you're saying to do apples, apples and celery could be good. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I'm giving you guys boob shots. <laughs> 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 Kathy, wait, Kathy, you have a question? Well, you were just saying so, but to do apples that are organic, right? Without any waxes on them. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Pears are great too, actually. So if you like pears better, but um, apples and pears, I mean, the research was done on apples, but apples and pears share a lot of similarities in terms of, um, you know, helping with fiber and detox inflammation. So um, you could change it up. I just thought... So many times with detoxes, it's so much like all the things you can't do, right? And I like to focus on, okay, how do we crowd out the other things? So if you're like eating, okay, I'm going to eat an apple every day. It's like, when are you going to eat that? Maybe when you would have your afternoon coffee, for example. So, but, you know, adding things in helps us to crowd out the things that aren't serving us. So um, another thing you could do is like putting lime or lemon in your water in some warm water in the morning to mm -hmm. help, you know, get things going. So like, okay, let's say you want to keep your coffee or your tea. All right. Could you do hot water with lemon before, um, before you do that? So you do something good for yourself. Right. And then, um, then you have <laughs> your reward is your coffee. Right. So other questions? Jen, question around the turmeric, like any just normal, like turmeric, you can get at Trader Joe's, like that's good. Or is there a better, I mean, I tried like getting like the turmeric root and you know, it's just, I mean, it's a lot easier to just sprinkle exactly. some out of the- Exactly, you know. the turmeric root is awesome, right? But now you are dealing with something that's very yellow that you have to cut yeah. and you have to juice and you have to, and, and that would be amazing, right? If you wanted to make your own ginger shot, I mean, mm -hmm. turmeric shot. Um, Trader Joe's has organic turmeric. That's great. Okay. Um, Mother's Market, I think, has turmeric in bulk, so you could do yeah, that. Um, there's the also Asian store. Yeah, the yeah, Asian market. Store. Oh my God! I usually I used to have. Um, I just don't live near. I guess I probably do. I just since I moved down here, I don't really like. It's not in my radar where the Asian market is. But yeah, I used to have the big giant, you know, turmeric jar like that. So, um, but yeah, any turmeric. Anything. I mean, and this is what I was I'm trying to say is that, you know, I want you to have take home things you can do now, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm excited. I hope you're going to join the cleanse with me on Monday. But even for now, to be like, all right, I'm going to try some of this turmeric ginger tea and I'm going to put some turmeric on my food and I'm going to take three deep breaths. <laughs> you know? But the little things add up. They really yeah. do. They really, really do. Yeah. Other questions? Will you all smile? So when I stop recording, the end, the end tile will be on all of your beautiful smiles. Okay, ready? Smile. I'm gonna inbox you. Smile.